Hey everyone. So, my last episodes were the year-end lists, and it got kind of heavy, because 2020 was a heavy year. I think I'd like this next episode to be more upbeat. Mighty people! Say whoop, that is hit me! Welcome back, party people, to One Hit Wonderland, where we take a look at bands and artists known for only one song. And oh boy, there are few acts who are known for only one song like this one was. Tag team, back again. Check the year 1993 can be summed up in one word. That word was whoop. Whoop, whoop. I don't even know what sound that's supposed to be. Sound of someone flopping onto a beanbag chair, maybe? You don't need to know what it was. It was so powerful that Woomp There It Is, the party anthem by the rap duo Tag Team, was the second biggest hit song of that year. It was just barely kept off the top of the charts by Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You. Which, actually, I think that song has a Woomp in it. And I... See? There it is. But yeah, that song was everywhere. You remember how big Old Town Road was? In my memory, Woomp There It Is is like 500 times bigger. I grew up in a household that was not open to rap music, or any popular music. But even in a childhood deprived of the hippity hop, I was very aware of Woomp There It Is. It's probably the first hip hop song I could name or sing. I guess I could have been vaguely aware of You Can't Touch This, Insane in the Brain, or Hip Hop Hooray, but they had nowhere close to the impact on me that Tag Team did. <laughs> In 1993, hip-hop was probably at its very most controversial. But Woomp There It Is was right there, clearing a path to the masses. Gets played in stadiums every night. There was a rap song that sampled it just a couple months ago. They wanna see me do my dance in these thousand dollar pants. Oh, and of course now there's a goddamn Geico commercial. Can't wait to watch that a few hundred more times. But despite the ubiquity, Tag Team tagged out of the conversation pretty quickly. To me, the little kid, they were bigger than the Beatles, but they never sniffed the charts again. Whoop, there they were. And then there they weren't. What happened? Well, why don't we check out how they turned Whoop into the vague, undefined sound effect that captured an era? Can you dig it? Can y'all dig it? Okay, so, Atlanta. Welcome to Atlanta. Atlanta owns hip-hop now, but it was a backwater nowhere for a long time. Eventually, Outkast and Goody Mob established the Dirty South sound, but Atlanta's first notable acts were pop crossovers. Criss Cross, TLC, Rust Development in 92, and then Tag Team in 93. Which is funny, because Tag Team were not from Atlanta. Steve Rowland and DC The Brain Supreme met in high school in Denver. After that, Steve went to the Art Institute in Atlanta to study studio engineering. DC followed him out there shortly afterward, and they started a rap duo, the Tag Team Crew. Here is their first single from 1990, entitled Strictly Political. We struggle for this privilege oh so long since our ancestors were contained by shackle bond. The tactics they used to diss us are unethical. I speak my mind and it's strictly political. I gather they started out in a much different place than they ended up. Uh, it's, it's 1990. Public Enemy's still big. They are definitely biting their flow from KRS One. One day this will end and the conscience will rise. Keep your eyes on the prize and the wise will advise. So stand up and fight. Yeah, they must have figured out that they didn't have a future as political commentators because they don't sound like this ever again. Then again, maybe the apparatus just wasn't there to promote them yet. A few years later, Atlanta is starting to hit, and DC the Brain Supreme was DJing at Atlanta's famous strip club, Magic City. Magic City turned out to be like the hotbed of Dirty South hip hop, but at the time, the Dirty South style was coming a little further south. One of the bigger trends in rap at the time was Miami Bass, a boomingly loud, extremely butt-centric music that started in the late 80s. It was very horny and not super respectful to women. It was good music for strip clubs, basically. Bitch, been dope, let me ride your backside like dogs do each other. The group Two Live Crew took it mainstream, but not very mainstream. They were very controversial and banned almost immediately. But that kind of sound was obviously very popular at Magic City. And so DC and Steve were like, maybe we could put something like this together. If you want to know what hip hop was like in 93, here's a news we cover from that year. Rap too violent. The backlash to pop rap has driven away the likes of Hammer and Vanilla, leaving the gangsters in firm control of music. 
There are a number of militant rappers like Ice Cube and Public Enemy who are criticized as anti-American and anti-Semitic. In 92, Ice-T starts a political firestorm by rapping about killing cops, and now it is 93. The most popular new artist in music is Snoop Doggy Dogg. He has just been charged with murder. That's also the commercial breakthrough year of Tupac Shakur, who has also been charged for shooting at two off-duty cops, and for Cypress Hill with their constant promotion of illegal drug use. Meanwhile, Two Life Crew is gone, but their descendants have littered the Hot 100 with a string of leering booty jams that are definitely not improving rap music's reputation for sexism. So with all that noise going on, how was I, as a small suburban child, able to know and sing along with a rap song? Mighty people! Like, we danced to this in P.E. I think our little third grade choir sang it at assemblies. It wasn't just children, obviously. It owned the entire world. It killed on dance floors. It got entire arenas of people on their feet. It was for everybody and everyone. Where the hell did this come from? DC says that Woomp There It Is was just one of many songs they threw together. He put it on one day at the strip club and got a huge reaction out of it, but didn't think anything about it until a little later when the strippers actually started requesting it. And from there, they pressed a bunch of copies and shopped it around. Miami bass was still a little too hot for prime time at the time, so it was hard to get signed. But they found one tiny label that took a chance on them, and by that summer, the song was just everywhere. And clearly, you could credit it all to that one perfect hook with its one perfect line. Whoop, there it is. The motto of a generation. It was such a powerful lyric. It was so powerful that Woomp There It Is was not even the only Woomp There It Is that year. This is Woot There It Is by 95 South. It was also a big hit at the exact same time. That could have been a big plagiarism controversy, considering the jump, jump around debacle of 92, but everyone was very clear that this was just a coincidence. Woomp There It Is was a common local expression, so there were probably a dozen other no-names with their own Woomp There It Is. 95 South and Tag Team did like a Battle of the Bands thing together on Arsenio that year for charity. You know, it was all very friendly. Tag Team lost that night, but they won the larger battle. They're the ones people remember. I think it's because they spelled it Woomp. DC says that he was very clear that's how he wanted it spelled. Like, you say Woomp There It Is when you saw a hot girl. So, it's just more impactful that way. Woomp sounds like a punch in the gut. Whereas Woot became the sound of internet forum nerds in the 2000s. That's why they lost. Or it might be because Woot There It Is, the song, was just too focused on the booty. See, there's only so mainstream that can go. Meanwhile, Woomp There It Is went worldwide. Crossing over was not easy in 93. If you were too street, you couldn't cross over, but if you were too pop, you'd be rejected immediately. But Tag Team found a way. The commercial brilliance of Woomp There It Is is that it's a strip club anthem that's not a strip club anthem. Like, there's almost nothing to this beat. It's just a shuffling hi-hat and a short bass riff. But it's grimy and bassy and mega hype like the other Miami songs. You can play it at the strip club, but you can also play it anywhere. In fact, I found an interview where Tag Team talked up its crossover appeal. A rap single with no shooting, maiming, complaining, cussing, politics, or anything degrading to women? Sounds like a sure flop, doesn't it? Well, it didn't flop. But that does kind of point to a larger problem with the song. Party on, party people, let me hear some noise. DC's in the house, jump, jump, rejoice. I have fond memories of Woomp, there it is. I get amped whenever I hear it. But I've also never once felt the need to listen to it on my own time. I've never played it on purpose. I could rap maybe one line of it besides the title and boom shakalaka. Can you tell me any lyrics? I looked up the lyrics and they're actually a tiny bit dirtier than I realized. Now it's time for to get on the mic and make this mother party hot. There's one N-word, a marijuana reference. Invent and bent as a puff on tank. Nothing major, you just bleep those out of the radio edit without a single person even noticing. It's not like Gin and Juice, where the clean version is just like the entire song re-recorded. Even the booty reference. Flip it and ride that B-O-O-T-Y, oh my. It, it's spelled out. Like when you spell out dirty words so your toddler doesn't understand you. That's why this song, which debuted in a strip club, eventually became, like, children's music. It's a kid's song. Kids Bob back again. Check its records, let's begin. Part <sighs> Whoop, there it is. Shouldn't be. But it is. 
it's not at all surprising me that one of these guys was a DJ because they both rap like party DJs. I'm taking it back to the old school because I'm an old fool who's so cool. It's not a very lyrical flow. It's just there to keep the hype up, keep the beat moving. Come on, come on. Unsurprisingly, it found its natural home not in strip clubs, but sports arenas. I'm pretty sure Boom Shakalaka was a sports thing already. It's basically the original Jock Jam. It gets entire stadiums on their feet. That, and that's really the only time you should be playing it. I was too young, so I can't tell you if Woomp There It Is ever had a backlash, like if it ever became corny or lame, like what happened with Jiggy a few years later. In my memory, that didn't happen. It just went away like everything does, but I wouldn't know. The crossover success must have taken some kind of toll on their careers, because they did not see any more action. Like, let me read that quote again. A rap single with no shooting, maiming, complaining, cussing, politics, or anything degrading to women. That's great that it doesn't have those things, but what does it have? What is it about? What are you about? Who are you? After the big hit, Tag Team's story becomes a little obscure. Their videos are predictably hard to find. This is the best version I could dig up. I apologize for the quality. Apparently, this is their follow-up single. It's called You Go Girl. I think they were hoping to build an entire career out of 90s catchphrases. You know, like maybe a song called Booyah. Oh snap, talk to the hand. Unlike Woomp There It Is, this one does have a topic. It's a tribute to all the wonderful black women of the world. Yeah, you can see where they're going with this, right? Just like Woomp There It Is, it's a more positive, uplifting version of the Miami bass sound. You can call it corny, but I think there's a place for that. Nubian ham is what I want. Step two, let me rock that coochie coo. That rump I pursue, big breast assist. I love them. Okay, I think we're starting to lose the thread a little in this third verse. The EXX girl flex. Tip on grip, magic stream, oh yes. Huh. Yeah, the suburban teenagers who ate up Woomp There It Is will not be listening to this. In fact, no one will be listening to this, because... Well, tag team are not the tightest of MCs. And she's the same. Just being down with each other is the name of the game. We're a tag team and we're here to say we support black women in a major way. At this point, they had two choices. They could try and capture lightning in a bottle again, or they could just milk wound there it is forever. They went with option two. So, let me introduce you to the seven squillion other versions of their one song. How about Woomp There It Is in Spanish? On that day, reggaeton was born. Or how about Bulls There It Is? A pretty popular Chicago area remix for the Bulls dynasty that year. Bulls. Come on, yo. Bulls. Did this inspire Michael Jordan to quit basketball altogether for another sport? We can only speculate. Oh, but now, now we get to the good stuff. Wednesday, would you like to set us off? Kick it. Party time with the Adams family. Yeah. Adams family. This is Adams Family Woom. It was the theme to the movie Adams Family Values, which also came out that year. The Adams Family movie theme go mesmortisha. Come on. Again, these videos are kind of rare, so thank you very much to whatever weirdo had this on their computer and uploaded it to YouTube. Anyway. Have you ever wanted to hear a rap about the Adams Family by two subpar MCs who do not seem to know much about the Adams Family? Wednesday Pugsley learned you ring and fessed up grandmama and things. Wait, can't forget cousin it. Even better, would you like to see a preteen Christina Ricci be forced to do a hip hop dance and clearly not wanting to be there? Pugsley seems to be into it though. What we have learned from all this is that the Adams Family are creepy, and they're kooky, and they're all together fatal to rap careers. They killed Hammer in 91, they killed Tag Team in 93, and they probably killed Migos in 2019. That was an actual thing that happened, you missed it. But if you think we've reached the low point, oh no 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 no, no no no, we've got one step lower to go. Kick it. Full effect. That's me, Mickey, the Mouse Supreme, MC and the birthday.
birthday party of my main duck Donald. We're kicking the f How on earth have I managed to restrain myself for so long that I've never spoken about the magical world of Mickey Unwrapped? a 1994 CD featuring the lead single, Woomp There It Went, by Tag Team Mickey, Minnie, and Goofy. You may remember the 90s trend of ironic gangsta versions of cartoon characters. This is not that. This was not ironic. It was pitched directly to little kids. And I remember the commercials distinctly. This is the Mickey of the 90s. Mickey and his gang signs and his sagging pants over his regular yellow button pants. Check it out. It features all your favorite rappers like Tag Team and Whoopi Goldberg. And also a song called Ducks in the Hood. The entire CD is a cavalcade of horrors that is beyond the scope of this video. Yeah, just check that out on your own time. And that's the last time anyone heard of Tag Team. Encouraging Goofy to sing Boom Shaka Laka Laka. Somewhere, poor Max is just dying of embarrassment. This is pathetic. No, afraid not. Their 1994 single, Here It Is, Bam, didn't go anywhere. In 1995, they hit an incredible low point by recording a rap song for the talking pig movie, Gordy. Mickey Mouse is at least a cultural icon. Gordy? They released a couple more singles and a second album, which all flopped. That might not be their fault. The record company collapsed and Tag Team was tied up in court for years with royalty disputes with the label and copyright disputes because of the sample. And when the label went under, no one was really dying to sign them. And Steve unfortunately got mixed up with dealing drugs and went to jail. DC went back to DJing and they just kind of disappeared for a while. But after a few years they reunited and they pop up every now and then at corporate events and 90s nights. And Woomp There It Is lives on, of course, in commercials, movies, stadiums. And if you can, go find The Best of Tag Team, a compilation record that the AV Club called one of the most pointless CDs ever made. It has all their greatest hits like Woomp CeeLo S, Woomp There It Is House Mix, and Woomp Remix 2000. But, and this is the key point here, it does not have the original Woomp There It Is. You only get one whoomp there it is in life. Yeah! There are some pop rappers like the Black Eyed Peas or Flo Rida who manage to keep finding hooks no matter how little they offer as MCs. Tag Team could not pull that off. They've said that they were riding too high on whoomp mania to think very hard about their image or their career or any long term plans, which is probably how they wound up rapping next to Pugsley and Donald Duck, but I don't think they had much future anyway. This was always what was going to happen, and they should be glad that they cashed in on whatever they could whenever they could. Sometimes people just catch magic by accident and they win the lottery. That's what happened to Tag Team. When you see them performing now, they seem pretty comfortable with all they've achieved. Woomp there it is! Woomp there it is, and woomp there it was, and woomp there it will always be, now and forever. <laughs>